My name is Ian and welcome to Planted. I'm on a mission to help you do more with plants. As you can see, I've come to a, a landfill site where they're collecting tree stumps and leaves and all sorts of brush. And with the aid of this heavy machinery, chip it up into mulch. This video is all about mulch. What it is, what it isn't, why it works, and why sometimes you don't want it. Mulch has been in use for centuries. It's really good at holding in water when spread on new planting, prevents those plants from drying out. Really good as insulation in really cold winters, prevents erosion, as you see here, this downspout has delivered a minimal of damage. And it's also really good at preventing weeds from getting established. But mulch really should decompose. That's the purpose of it. As it decomposes, it releases its nutrients for those plants to use, not just this year, but in subsequent years. But we have now moved away from mulch being a tool and a very effective tool, and we now place it as an aesthetic treatment. People will add mulch to their yards, contractors will add mulch, and if some is good, then more is better. Mulch has taken on a decorative stance in our gardens, and it's something that I just don't understand. When you add layer after layer of deep mulch around any plants, not just a tree, this is what happens. You can end up with a 14 inch layer of mulch which is detrimental to the growth of that plant because oxygen is not able to get to the roots and you can get a rot set in at that area. Now you can go to any old parking lot in North America or in that case any other part of the of the world and you'll find island beds like this. This one's got two conifers and a tree. The rest of the plants have died out. But rather than focusing on replanting, the focus is, well, let's just keep on mulching. We'll add more mulch on top of more mulch. And we'll have a mulch garden. And doesn't that look weed-free? At least I've done my job and I've got paid for it. So let's not use mulch as a decorative layer. Let's use it as a tool A lot of mulch is available pre-bagged and it comes in all sorts of names. Here's pine mini nuggets and then you've got the normal pine nuggets and you really want the bark. The bark is really good because it will decompose quickly and release its nutrients. Here we've got premium pine bark mulch, so a different name altogether. It comes in different sizes and this is where I think the wheels fall off. We're actually now choosing our mulch based on its color. We've got different choices of orange, tan, brown, and black. But here it is, it's actually sold as decorative. Cedar decorative mulch. And it's not being used as a tool, but hopefully this video might nudge you in the right direction. Traditionally, mulch used to be pine bark. Now, there are other conifers that can produce bark, and it has lots of attributes. It's quite light in its weight, and it will decompose relatively quickly, releasing its nutrients. But now, we're in an environment where anything that was once growing, trees, shrubs, scrub, poison ivy, bamboo, Christmas trees, can get chipped and turned into what looks like mulch. Now, it doesn't have all the characteristics of good quality mulch, but it's also much more available, it's relatively cheap, and you can put it on your yard and it will make it look so much better. But I really have to point out now that this mulch with its heavy wood content, which is, is called lignified cells, takes a long time for it to break down. And if you put this on your garden, it'll actually rob nutrients from your soil and from your plants to aid in the decomposition process. So you think that you're doing good, but actually, 
a big thick layer of this will suck out nitrogen in particular and prevent your plants from growing. So if you do use it, it should go on a thin layer and you'd be advised to put in a, a layer of nitrogen fertilizer, just a, a small dose, to help get that decomposition proce process going. This facility focuses on leaves brought in by the bag and brought in by the trailer and it's much less dense and, and heavy than the other pile which had a lot of branches and scrub in it. And those leaves get turned, they get very hot, you'll even see them steaming. And it doesn't take long before it looks like this. Now this is substantially decomposed, which means that it needs a lot less time in your yard before it releases its nutrients to your plants. You can add this to soil and use it as a top dressing, it's really good for vegetables. Put it around roses, even mulch with it, a thin layer, not too thick. And it's good, but it will introduce weed seeds into your yard, something that you have to be aware of. Don't think that suddenly the rules have changed. You will get weed seeds, weed seeds if you use this. Now let's go and look at those fantastic machines. Multiple towns share the expense of this equipment. You've got the excavator and you've also got the chipper. And it will rotate around those towns, chipping multiple times a year. But the machine is remarkable. It's a one-man show, taking everything you can possibly feed it. Scrub, brush, bamboo, poison ivy, rhododendrons, Christmas trees, all sorts of things. It all gets put in one end, goes through the chipper, and it comes out the other end, looking like mulch. At the beginning of this video, I started out with all those different types of mulch. There's playground mulch that's supposed to fall off you when you stand up and not get carried into the house. There's brown mulch, there's red, and there's different sizes and different combinations. And then you've got this, which is uh, chewed up anything. All of it has its place, but just know that when you put it on your garden, it's supposed to do a job. It's not just there to look nice. I thought this was really cool. This chipper is operated by remote control. So the guy in the excavator has got a little Xbox controller and this is what he gets to drive. Thank you for watching Planted. Tell your friends, tell your family, don't mulch too deeply. Happy planting.